Well, hello today. It's good to see you at this community coaching kickoff. I'm so excited to do this round of community coaching because I've just been through all the material myself again and the process of rewriting it and reworking it, adding a module about baby steps, combining some things so they're less repetitious. There were a few modules where as I was, well, it turned into like rewriting instead of revising because it's like, what in the world was going on in this module? <laughs> so if you have done community coaching before and you can raise your hand if you are a repeat community coaching alumni here, if you've graduated, let people know in the chat because you are going to be a huge resource for all the new people that we have too. If you have finished community coaching before, I'm just so excited for you to see the new version because it's iterated. It's new and improved. It is much more structured and clear in exactly what we're supposed to be doing. The Simplified Organization Program is a lot of material. It's three courses that each have 12 modules. And we go through and we just cover a module a week. And then there are catch-up weeks built in every six weeks. There will be a summer break. So, that, so there's plenty of time to practice and repeat and catch up as needed. So a big principle that you'll hear repeated in simplified organization, but it's also practiced in the way we're going to be doing community coaching together is that small steps count and we are not going to put something off until we have enough time. Just one minute, two minutes, five minutes of getting started will build momentum over time, even if it really is only two minutes. That matters more than waiting until you can do it all the way or good enough. That kind of waiting for good enough is perfectionism. And the practice of community coaching is practicing overcoming our perfectionist tendencies. And I, most people who go through community coaching realize that they were way more perfectionistic than they realized. Yes, Judy says, even if you don't stay caught up, it's still helpful. Take what helps at the time and I'm never caught up. Exactly. When, at the end, when we do the graduation survey, you don't have to have checked every box, even the reduced community coaching boxes. You don't have to have even read every module or done each of the, the three essentials per term to graduate. Anyone who's still with us at the end graduates because the point isn't getting completion every step of the way. That's perfection. The point is that you are sticking with it. You're picking back up when you can. You're not letting the, the feeling of being behind trip you up and make you stop because you won't do anything that's not perfect, that's not complete, that's not whole. If you just pick up, forget what you missed, just pick up where everyone else is and move forward. If you're still doing that at the end, no matter how much you actually ended up doing, you are a simplified organization community coaching grad. Think about choosing a focus for the coming year, a watch word. Some people do a word of the year. Let me know in the chat if you do a word of the year and if you've chosen it already. If you have, that's your watch word. That's the thing that you are going to keep coming back to, keep reminding yourself of. And when you need a little direction 
for you know what habits to work on which baby step to take you look at the watch word the focus word and that helps you take a you know zero in on and take so you know how focus means that it's narrower right if you're focused on something or a focused beam of light is the opposite of diffuse so diff if light is diffuse it goes in a broad beam and is spread out over a large span but a focused light is restricted and narrow and much much smaller but because all that light is narrower it's super powerful so it can you know laser eyeballs and make your vision improved <laughs> like lasers are powerful lasers are focused light and so it's the same with our attention we can be thinking of a lot of things and there's a time for that but in order to really be productive and get something meaningful done we have to narrow in our focus and make our focus much much smaller so your watchword or focus word is a reminder a personal reminder to yourself of where you are going to narrow your attention in on what you are going to narrow your attention in on what's going to help you go from seeing all the options and trying to do it all to really picking a good baby step for you for your life right now forgiveness heather has a motto instead of a word or the word is grit and the motto is grit grace gratitude by kathy has more of a motto, tidy home, healthy body, calm mind. That works. Sweetly resting as a hymn name for your motto. Graft is Carissa's. That's cool. Commit. Ashley is sharing what I'm sure many other people feel, but might not admit ashley says finding a focus is so hard for me i know we can be more powerful with laser focus but i'm always afraid i'll miss out on something if i pick one thing but the reality is that you actually miss out on much more when your attention is diffuse and you're trying to do all the things because it's that all or nothing it's not quite the same as all or nothing mindset just another brand of perfectionism but when you are trying for all or nothing you get nothing right when your attention is spread on trying to do all the things less progress is actually made because the reality is that the small steps don't stop at small steps and that's where it feels like it's doing much less but the laser focus and baby steps does not mean doing less. It is not doing less. But that's what it feels like. That's what it looks like at first. But the reality is that progress happens one step at a time. Let's see. Our our progress is much more like a drip of water that's continual drip filling a glass. But what we think we need is a tidal wave. <laughs> it's kind of going in and like everything covered all at once. And we just don't actually work that way, even though that's what we're going for or that's what we're wishing for or we're thinking that our systems are going to help us become tidal waves. And on the one hand, a tidal wave is super destructive, not productive. And maybe your glass gets full, maybe not, maybe because of, of all the force, it just goes in and right out again. But the drop of water into a cup fills it in a useful way. And, you know, that's not a perfect metaphor but one drop at a time doesn't end up equaling tiny drops of water 
it ends up equaling, it could be not just a cup of water, but a river. You think of rain falling one drop at a time into a river and filling it and the momentum there. But what it's kind of, so baby steps are actions that end up working the same way keystone habits do. And I don't know if you've ever heard of the concept of a keystone habit, but those are habits that end up impacting or affecting more of our lives than it appears at first glance. So, you know, making your bed is a keystone habit because when your bed is made, you get more than a made bed you actually get a different approach to your routines, to your life, to your cleanliness habits. You become a different kind of a person. And so, or, you know, getting dressed in the morning, it's more than just checking the box. Oh, I got dressed. You're actually much more likely to be way more productive when you're dressed than when you're in your pajamas. So even though the action itself was just get dressed, it affects many more areas of our life. And so baby steps are like that also, where there's the one thing, and it looks like it's just one thing, but it actually ends up having ripples and affecting other things. And so you end up having more change and more momentum and more motivation overall than if you tried to do everything all at once. Oh, Rachel said she might go with the word drip because I'm always trying to force a tidal wave. (laughs) Yes, a tidal wave knocks the glass over. Exactly. (laughs) Droplet. Nice. Yes, Atomic Habits is a great book on that concept. He talks about 1% gains there where small incremental changes and improvements, super small, 1%. They have a compounding interest, a compounding effect where the the growth curve is just huge by only going for 1% better. So your watchword or focus word is something that helps you choose the direction for your baby steps and for your efforts. And it helps you stay on target with the course. So when you feel overwhelmed, because we all feel overwhelmed at times, but we are in the simplified organization going to learn strategies and tactics for dealing with overwhelm, for overcoming overwhelm. So it might not be that we're never going to experience it again, but we know what to do when we feel that way. Because being overwhelmed is just a feeling and we can do something about it besides panic. (laughs) Panicking is not the right option. That increases the overwhelm. But when we have a motto, a word, a phrase that we can go back to, it can help us calm down because it's narrower, it's smaller it's doable, or maybe not like drip isn't doable, but it's something that summarizes an idea that will help you be more grounded, tethered instead of, you know, flying all over the place. It's like, okay, come back down to this place and we can move forward again because this is what's important. Oh, so one thing that I am super excited about, about community coaching this year is the structure that each module has. So community coaching overall for the whole program has this structure. And then every module has the same structure. Um, There are four steps that we're going to go through in each module and then four steps that we're actually working on throughout the whole course. And this is the kind of key to how I ended up reordering and rearranging the modules and adding a few in. So every module begins with a brain dump. And if you 
haven't brain dumped before, it just means writing down what you're thinking. And you're directed in these new modules to spend only five or 10 minutes brain dumping. So it doesn't have to be complete or thorough or take a long time, but it's just to get the juices flowing to help you be aware of your current situation so that you can make better decisions moving forward because you have an awareness of where you are at and what your family needs. Because we don't want to just be copy pasting someone else's plan or ideas into our lives. We want to be exercising discernment and wisdom and prudence about the area that God has given us responsibility in. So each of us takes responsibility for the roles that God has given us, the duties that God has given us. And that's going to be different for every person. The things that you are stewarding, including the situations and the circumstances, they're unique to each one of us. And so the brain dump section there might seem like it's busy work, but it isn't. Starting with a brain dump, you'll, you'll hear members who've been around for a long time say, you know, when they first started, they were skeptical about brain dumps, but they'll be the first to jump in now and say, start with a brain dump. That's just something, that's one of our go-tos, start with a brain dump. Because the process of brain dumping helps you become aware of what your situation actually is, what your expectations are, what's really going on, where you're at. And then you can make more appropriate and more targeted decisions moving forward because you're going to make decisions based on an understanding of what's going on in your particular situation instead of just trying to make your situation into someone else's or take someone else's solution and try to fit it to your family, your circumstances. You're exercising wisdom, which starts with an awareness of where you're actually at right now. So the brain, starting with a brain depth is big. And so one of the first modules will be, what is a brain dump? And you'll learn about brain dumping right off the bat. But then as you go along, you're going to be practicing brain dumping in just little bite-sized pieces. And every module starts with a brain dump. Then every module has a focus step. A small step that helps you put something into place or validate your thinking on the topic so that you have some a go-to resource or idea. A lot of them are writing a particular sentence, which is another thing that a lot of people struggle with when it's brand new, that they'll resist or just put off as busy work and not essential, which, I mean, you don't have to, no one's going to force you to do them but they really are actually helpful. So the focus step might be writing, naming your vocations, writing a habit statement, which is a writing exercise that I walk you through step-by-step, step, give you a template. And if we could get some testimonials in the sidebar to encourage people to actually do it, that would be helpful. It really is helpful to write these particular statements that should be assigned in the modules. It's not busy work. It, it helps you know what you're doing. It helps you be concrete and specific in your thinking instead of just kind of being vague and wishy-washy. You can't take action when your ideas are vague. So the various sentences that you'll be writing along the way help you get concrete and specific about your life and your responsibilities. So it is an exercise that helps you make it your own, which will then help you live it out more and more. So the focus exercises, some of them are very obvious, like in the daily card one, it's making a daily card, but they are exercises that help you get specific and focused on that module's content. 
and the term two and three are both kind of focused terms where we figure out what we're doing and get very clear and concrete and specific about what we're doing in our home after the first term is a decluttering term because brain dumping is decluttering your head. So we're kind of just assessing where we're at and clearing things out, getting things ready in the first term. Then the next two terms we're focusing, we're getting clear and specific about where we're at. And then the third step is baby steps. And that is taking action, but taking small specific actions. So there will be a module about what baby steps are and how to practice them. But within each module, after the focus step, there will be a baby step section. And some of them will give everyone the same baby step. And some of them will give you an option to pick uh, this baby step or that baby step. You know, whatever is more appropriate for your situation. But the point is not to get a system in place that's going to make it all happen all the time. The point is to start taking action and practicing on repeat and to just get started rather than trying to figure everything out and getting it all going at once, which is many of our tendencies like getting organized is this huge thing and what would actually get us closer to that target would be just taking a small step right now instead of figuring out what a perfect plan would be so for two terms then we'll be getting baby steps going in various areas and within every module there will be a baby step practice to take. And if you look at the objectives at the bottom of the course, the little check boxes that you can check and it'll give you progress overall in the course, those four things. So reading or listening to the lesson, doing the focus step, taking a baby step or brain dumping. I missed brain dump. So read or listen to the lesson spend five to 10 minutes brain dumping with the prompts, do the focus activity, do the baby step activity. That's it. That is finishing the module. But there's still another section in, in each modules. And our final term in community coaching will be iterating. So to iterate is to adjust to figure out how to adapt your next step based on where you're at. So iterating is our anti-perfectionist secret weapon because the perfectionist tendency is to try to get the whole thing going at once. So if I, well, I've done this a lot, if I want a weekly planner page, I'm going to spend hours and hours browsing every single option I can and, you know, ordering several, printing several off, getting started with them, but never actually using it because I'm trying to make sure that I start with the best one, the one I'm going to commit to for the long haul. So before I start practicing, I try to find the starting place that's going to ensure the end result that I want. I think that I can't get started until the thing that I'm going to start is what I'm going to commit to for the long haul. Once I you know, decide I'm going to make the bed at 8 a.m. sharp, like I have to, before I commit to that, I have to be sure that I can commit to that, that you know, I'm going to do it for forever because I want to be consistent and I want it to be a habit. And, and those things that actually end up preventing us from making our bed at all or for having a planner at all. Instead, we need to just try something and practice something. And then we'll realize how things need to adjust and tweak and what we actually like and what will actually work. And we also realize that our life changes. So 
the planner that works one year might not end up working the next year. And then actually it doesn't mean that anything is broken or wrong at all. It means it's time to iterate, time to find the next thing, take the next step, make adjustments and course corrections. And that allows us to continually learn and continually apply and adapt to our current needs and situations without feeling like failures. Because our plan all along was to adjust as we go. So every module has an iteration section. And there are ideas in there for how you might need to grow the habit or adjust the habit as you put it in, as you take those first baby steps. But that section is for after you've practiced it a while. It's for troubleshooting. It's for taking it to the next level. It is particularly for those people who are working through the courses multiple times. If this isn't your first time and you go through and you're like, all right, yep, I already have this habit statement. I can tweak it. I, and then I'm already doing a daily card. You know, you have a lot of those steps in place. Then you can jump to the iterate section and say, what's the next thing for me in this? And it will give you some ideas, maybe some new brain dump prompts. They're different in each module, but they're steps for taking it to the next level, adjusting, customizing, and moving forward, changing it without feeling like you're breaking anything. Let's see, Rebecca asks, she says, I also would like some ideas of how to make time for the lessons, how to organize the materials, brain dumps, because I seem to lose my notebooks all the time. A year is a long time for me to keep track of things. Oh yeah. Yes. So let's talk about putting the time to work through the courses into our lives because I think that we all do have a tendency to make it more than it needs to be or to think that we need to spend a bunch of time when a little bit would make a bigger difference than waiting to do it all at once. So here is the overview of working of a module and how much time it would take and where it might fit because we're going to work through it about a module a week with catch up weeks built in and the summer off. So a module a week, it would be if you were doing everything, which we've tried to make everything small, it would be reading or listening to the lesson, which takes about 10 minutes. The modules, the audio will be right about 10 minutes, maybe 12 minutes. Reading, it's probably faster. Maybe you listen to the audio sped up, so it's only eight minutes. <laughs> so about 10 to 15 minutes for reading or listening to the content that's in the module. You could do that while washing the dishes one night, while folding the laundry. If you tie an action you want to take to something that's already happening, that will help you do it. Or you think, well, I'm going to read the lesson on my phone while my kids are, you know, at jujitsu or something where I'm sitting in a waiting room for a while. I'm sitting waiting to pick them up. I'm just going to use that time to read the module because they're short. It's not going to take that long to actually do it. So you could fit it in, in odd spots. You don't need this dedicated elab educational time. You can fit it here or there. Then there's the brain dump activity, which you can just take five or 10 minutes to brain dump. And again, you can look at your calendar and say, is there ever, you know, 10 minutes where I'm consistently just sitting somewhere and maybe my thoughts could use a little direction and I could turn that time into a helpful time for me or when the kids go down for a nap or after the kids are in bed, just 10 minutes, I highly recommend using a timer and cutting yourself off because you're more likely to keep coming back and doing all those brain dumps if you don't let it take a long time. So using a timer and actually stopping at 10 minutes 
will make it more likely for you to continue with them because it's no longer a big deal to do it. And our brain will build it up into a big deal if it's like, well, I have to carve out a whole hour for working on the course material. I'm like, well, that's not going to happen. But I can listen to the lesson while I'm in the car and I can do a brain dump, you know, Tuesday night because that fits into the flow of our day, 10 minutes there. And then there'll be some activity. And sometimes, you know, a lot of the times it's something that's helping you get your stuff done, right? Because this is, there's a lot of productivity strategies in the course. So, you know, making your daily card is just going to be, it's not a special course activity. This is just something you're going to be doing all the time. So you're figuring out, well, when should I do my daily card? And then just actually doing one. A lot of those, the focus statements or the focus step and the baby steps are actually doing things that are getting you ahead in your life. So 15 minutes at some point in your week for taking action with whatever that module is. That's it. And there's always more you can do. You can listen to more of the replays that are on that topic. You can come into Convivial Circle and talk about it and get accountability for it. You can spend more time, but you can actually check all the boxes for for community coaching in less than an hour a week. And it really shouldn't be all at once. It's actually going to be even more effective for you if you separate those out and have like three or four 15 minute spurts. That's going to set you up for the practice of just taking action and doing small things along the way that move you forward and the momentum and just, you know, that kind of just productivity bliss <laughs> that you feel like I did something. You you get a few of those going and it's like, oh, I can do. You get that mentality and that feeling, the oomph of, oh, I do things. Not It's so hard to carve out the time. A lot of those are stories that we play for ourselves and that are reinforcing. We practice what we think. And we practice the things that we have been practicing. So practice just taking 15 minute chunks of time, 10 to 15 minute, five to 15 minute chunks of time and use them in very constructive ways. And the payoff will, will pay off across the board. So I am super excited to do community coaching here. I'm going to change the link right here to a link for upgrading to an annual plan. If you want to do that and get the extra bonus material about choosing a watchword, you do get a prorated rate. So you get credited for what you've already paid. And yeah, the prices are going up on January 3rd. So now's a great time to lock in that rate. All right. All right. Yes. I'm so excited to work through this round with you all. And I will see you in Convivial Circle and in our Zooms. And we're going to have a great time this year. I'm so much looking forward to it. So thanks for joining me today. And I'll see you around.